So um, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the webinar on uh, career opportunities for um, automotive engineers in the electric vehicle segment. And uh, it's me, Suraj. Uh, I'll be the presenter and uh, the host for this uh, in the session. A uh, couple of my background, which has been already put here, uh, let's not take too much of time uh, in, in digging deeper. So I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I graduated in 2012. So after my graduation, I worked with uh, a company called ITC. So through that company, so I have worked with uh, uh, Mercedes. Uh, so where we have engaged in, uh, in the design of uh, Mercedes AMG GTRs uh, components uh, in India and also uh, in Germany with a few of the team members. So then I, the same, for the same company, I had another project to work on. That's with uh, Chrysler and uh, Fisher Dynamics in the US. So I worked there for a while uh, in, in design and development of a Jeep Wrangler uh, for the Australian market. Um, so that's, that's a bit of my corporate journey, which I worked with. And apart from it, I was also part of Infosys for a while and also HP uh, in India. Um, then I started a startup. So that's majorly in the sector of automotive electronics uh, with a couple of co-founders into a place. Um, so we consulted a lot of companies in India uh, a lot of startups in India on electric vehicles today. And also apart from it, we do consult uh, a few other companies in uh, Sweden and uh, a few more companies in across the globe. Uh, majorly our capability is in the areas of, um, I would say, um, uh, simulation and uh, powertrain uh, development. I would say the new powertrain development for uh, specific segments of vehicles and things like that. So apart from it, we also offer uh, the BMS development uh, for a few of the uh, suppliers. And also we work closely with uh, a few of the Tyrone suppliers to you know, design and develop uh, the battery management system and uh, motor controllers and things like that. So that's a bit of uh, background about myself and uh, our company, which is Decibels Lab. So we're glad to have you here. And you know, it was, it's a great pleasure to see you know, the academics is taking it more seriously. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the faculty and also uh, the head of the department has, uh, has so aggressively an opportunity to deliver a session. It's, it's really good to see, you know, uh, the academics is interested and also that they're trying to look forward to see a direction in the EVs. And that's been, I feel, as a future of mobility. So having that said, uh, let's, let's start the session. Uh, so my major purpose of this webinar would be this. Uh, we shall share the opportunities I had in the EV sector for engineers who are, work, who are looking to start a career in the EVs, help them to understand the skills needed and the projects they can do before graduating, our internships they can take up, and also to motivate students to build a startups in India, our sort of ecosystem at the college level itself, so that you know, when you graduate, uh, you would have a, a better exposure, even to get a job or either to perceive a, a startup itself because we see a huge startup ecosystem in India and we have, and also specifically in Bangalore, you're very much privileged to live in Bangalore and in a city like this, where you see a huge startup ecosystem, right? So if you take any startups or even bigger OEMs, uh, like a Mahindra or even Exicom and, and, and Bosch, have, Bosch having major center here, it's a huge, huge setup from the small startups. Let's say you take ultraviolet started by a couple of students from another college and then Aether here and so many other startups which are, which are in the EV segment because we've been interacting with all these people. So it's, it's good to know how much potential is there. And also government of Karnataka has been taking very good initiatives to set up an electric vehicle development uh, center. I think somewhere near to Gridhi with a 100 acre plant. I mean, this discussions has been going on for quite a while. So it is a huge, a huge uh, step for, to enter into an EV and also the government of Karnataka want to ensure that the testing happens in Karnataka itself, in Bangalore for our EVs. Uh, that's what the last of the discussions when we had uh, with a couple of the, the ministers which was been discussing on this one. And there has been a land also been allocated for that near community. So having that said, like you see a huge ecosystem happening in Bangalore itself and, and we being in Bangalore and uh, having a college in Bangalore, it's a very privileged to kind of set up. And there's a funds available and uh, there's a lot of uh, VC venture capitalists. You know, nowadays, government is funding into the activity. So now, if you're at a college, you have access to a lot of uh, uh, grants and things like that. So that is a motivation. And first to do all these things, you need to have a skill. You, know, you need to have the exposure, experience, and the knowledge to kind of you know, get into the areas of startups and things like that. It is not just like you know, uh, uh, a very simple thing, right? 
a huge thing. So that requires you to have a knowledge and that is what we try to see through and, and down the line and maybe that will help you to kind of structureize yourself. So before I continue, and I want to confirm that, you know, you guys are able to hear my voice clearly and also you, you are able to see my screen. So if yes, just message in the WhatsApp, sorry, uh, message in the chat box telling that yes or no, so that I can continue ahead rather than uh, just a blindfold discussion happening here. Uh, is, it, is it visible? The screen is visible to all of you. Is my audio is clear to all of you? Is there any disturbances? Okay, sounds good. Uh, looks like, okay, thanks a lot for responding. Yeah. So this is a uh, sort of a webinar flow, what I have. Uh, we expect it to run around 45 minutes and uh, 15 minutes of QA, uh, maybe a little more if in case if it is required on, on our discussions as such. So a, a small one minute on the decibels and then uh, more about EVs and then okay, five minutes about uh, what steps you can take to, uh, you should take and the skills you need to have and things like that. So it kind of gives you a summary of you know, what you should do. It's sort of an action plan uh, that you, know, you, you start doing it from tomorrow. So uh, about decibels, yeah, uh, this is a bit about it. Let me, not, let me not take too much of time here. So we're not here to listen about what we do. So as such, lms.decibelslab.com is a part of uh, LMS, uh, sorry, decibels. So where we educate and you know, share our knowledge and teach to a lot of students uh, at universities and colleges with our experience with the industry and then you know, consulting activities which we carry out with uh, the second point where we consult a lot of uh, companies in the electric vehicle segment, uh, the power train, new, new, the new product development in the manufacturing sector. And also we set up research labs across colleges uh, uh, and also uh, companies uh, for testing uh, lithium ion batteries or uh, and the development of the BMS or motor controllers and things like that. So and also because we have all of this uh, connected, we teach students on the other side, we consult a lot of industries. So they ask us, okay, can you, can you refer a few students when you're trained, you know, because there is no curriculum available at the college level on the ease. So yeah, we do, we do certain employment services. We call it the staffing services uh, for that. So that's a, a very bit about decibels as such. Okay. And, uh, Let's start ahead a session in, in a sort of understanding that you know what is uh, what is the scope of our learning and why EV should be the future and what will be the future. So there's a need for change, which definitely. Uh, so from the internal combustion engines uh, to EVs, uh, as such, uh, internal combustion engines has done a very tremendous amount of job and you know the great amount of uh, economic development in the country or in the world because of the mobility applications, right? So there is no uh, grudge on that, you know, EVs, uh, ICs are bad uh, because the, the time changes, you know, the time evolves around it. And then we also have to shift towards things which are better for the environment because where we all live in today. So we, we think about health is a very primary concern for all of us, right? So maybe the pandemic itself, we have seen how much a small shift in, you know, requirement of our health would, would put our economy into. So we are very serious about what is required for us in the future. That is a better environment. To make that happen, yeah, we need to see some shift in mobility that, that would save us some environmental emissions. Uh, so that is a way we are try, trying to think to the, you know, how we can cut down emissions in the mobility segment. So typically mobility segment contributes around 14%. There are a lot of research papers available on you know, how much is 14%, why is it 14% ease, or what parts of the mobility segment, like is it a general com mobility or is it a commercial mobility, or is it a trains or trucks or whatever it is, right? We can always go and you know study deeper. That itself is sort of you know one one you know, semester PhD study or something like that. So yeah, we we have IC engines that are wonderfully great, but we want to move towards uh, better uh, uh, eco-friendly uh, mobility options. When somebody evaluated that, so you could see uh, our EVs are more economical in in terms of usability, and also in terms of emissions that they contribute less carbon footprints into an atmosphere. They do contribute but they contribute lesser into the atmosphere. So which I have done some calculations here, if you take ether 450, uh, it, it consumes around 85.78 grams. It's an average out number. It's not like a 100% accurate number. It's a well-to-wheel analysis. The meaning of well-to-wheel analysis is uh, from the production of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, coal uh, until the utilization of the uh, utilization that at the thermal power plant and the generation of uh, electricity from the coal and then shipping that electricity all the way from the thermal power station to your house, and then you utilizing your vehicle, at, at charging your vehicle. When you charge a vehicle, it's electricity to a chemical conversion. Uh, it's, uh, then the stored chemical energy get converted into electrical energy when you use the battery, right? There are again losses around 14%, 13% nearly. 
accounting all of that, so ether contributes close around you know, 85.78 grams of carbon for every kilometer you drive. And I did not consider a few parameters over there. Obviously, there's a lot to consider, but as, a, as such as a, it's a well-to-win analysis, W2W. W, w. Active Honda, with an average of 50 kilometer mileage, it, it drops around 131.4 grams of carbon. So if you see, there's a comparatively 42 you know, 50 percent of uh, better carbon, lesser carbon footprints uh, in in ether, uh, electric mobility as well. That's a very big thing to debate. You know what uh, Mahindra is doing and what uh, ether is doing. There's so many things which you can compare about. It's it's what Tesla is doing in terms of its overall power and efficiencies. That's an engineering discussion which you can always have uh, in the further slides. So that's that's the foundation why we're going to move to mobility, which is EV. Um, so a very important point to also understand is the subsystems of ICs and you know the EV replacement, because as such as an engineer we are here today, uh, we would be sort of scared that you know what happens to IC engine uh, you know industry and what happens to uh, an industry where it has been served for over 100 years, and now all of a sudden where what what will be happening to all these manufacturers who are in the powertrain segment, right? If you take as such, I put up the images in a way that it is more descriptive. Um, so you, you have a powertrain itself that is basically all the components like an engine block, piston, connecting rod, rings, uh, gut joint, pin. then the engine block itself and the crankcase, casing, oil pump, the heads in the uh, engine, that's camshaft, uh, connect, like any of the other components, cams, springs, um, anything, anything of that sort, right? And then you have your exhaust system and then your intake system, which I mentioned here. If we talk about exhaust system, again, you have a, um, what do you say? emission control systems in the exhaust systems, and then your intake systems also, then you talk about a turbocharger, supercharger, and a lot of other technologies which comes as a part of the intake systems, right? And then you have fuel delivery systems, right? So that's your fuel pump, fuel tank, uh, medium pressure pump, and a high pressure pump, uh, and then any of the injectors and rails, and, and a lot of sensors and actuators which comes as a part of this, and the ECU itself. So like, you know, if you constitute as such as a vehicle, the vehicle remains a vehicle, right? So you have a car, it remains a car. The only thing which you change is the powertrain. So basically replacing all these components, you will have something like a, a motor and a few other components. That's what we're going to discuss uh, in a couple of next slides. The motivation here to understand that, you know, so many components, so many component manufacturers, all were there in manufacturing of these parts and designing of these parts, consulting, development, testing, validation, quality approvals, a lot of these things, right? A lot of these things and even homologations and things like that. So now all of a sudden when, when the industry want to move to EV uh, and there are millions of millions of jobs are at stake when, when you talk about, okay, shifting from here to a new segment itself. So which I would like to address in the next slides, you know, how, because a shift is mandatory, you know, you, you don't want it, who cares about it, right? So that's the situation right now that, you know, if, if uh, Maruti says, you know, I will not shift to EVs, like government say, go and die. I don't care for that, right? So, because it's a shift, uh, you, you have to adopt. We've been adopting an, a shift to your new uh, requirements in our life. So it will be the same way everywhere across. So the shift will happen with my knowledge and an aggressiveness what we're going through today. Uh, so you have to adopt and you have to learn and you, know, you have to take up your skills at your next level. So that, you know, how I can survive with a new set of skills in the EV industry? Because you know, we can't sit in the back and say that I don't want to learn about EVs, right? So you have to adopt and you have to learn and, and then that's the way you can get a job and so you can get paid and, and the economy grows and our life grows better. So the objective of this session would be that, where I could brief you through what other subsystems are there and what you as an engineers would involve in designing those systems and what kind of roles and responsibilities are there and what skill sets you need to have. So this is what ecosystem which is going to be sort of uh, gradually goes down. I would, I would say like maybe over the span of other 10 years or 20 years or 50, 30 years possibly. So you would see a gradual erosion of uh, an ice engine sector and then, then moving into an e-mobility segment as such, right? So we understand that there are subsystems in EV in this slide. So now it's sort of a replacement to all your uh, power train, which is there in the um, uh, IC side. So in EV, we know that, you know, it is not, uh, we always said that in, you know, in electric vehicles, uh, so in IC engines, we have so many parts, you know, what about uh, EVs? Are there any number of parts? Uh, you know, the, the ecosystem will be very big as MS to IC engines and things like that, which I anticipate definitely because I see there is a lot of parts which again have to replace these IC engines, right? So 
uh, many of the systems which we discuss, like in a fuel delivery systems or our air intake systems, exhaust systems, or a power delivery itself at the engine side. So similar to that, we have a lot of subsystems in EV, which, which could be called as a replacement to a powertrain, right? So going ahead in the next slide, these are the subsystems which we see that they needed to replace uh, components of uh, IC engine parts, right? right? So, which we see drastically that yes, there is a transmission too, right? So, it, it may not be big transmission like you know five speed, six speed, seven speed, and eight speed transmissions, but I think it will be a smaller transmission. Okay, maybe like a couple of gear issues, maybe like two, three gear issues of that sort, and that's where we're limiting ourselves into our transmission as such here in uh, electric vehicles. So, if you see the engineers who are designing transmission for IC engines, will still have something similar to perceive in the areas of. Uh, uh, EV powertrains too, because the power, the, as such as a powertrain, it is including all the components, right? So uh, our transmission still exists, so that you, you still see the job opportunities in the areas of transmission design and, and you know, all this. But it may be a smaller one, but you still see uh, 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 opportunities of design things and testing validation and all these things over there in the transmission side. And there are a few vehicles which we see that transmission is not there, but actually uh, it doesn't make any sense not to have a transmission. It, it does really require a transmission to have at least a two to three speed. So that actually you can play around with your uh, motorizing kind of a concept. So it is required uh, because basically the small bikes, like you know, where you have a hub motor sort of a thing, you don't need a transmission, but definitely if you go a little upper category, like our HR has today, it also has a transmission, right? It's a very simple one. So you could see the cars and you know things like that. Definitely, it requires a transmission. You cannot have a you know, opportunity to put a very big bulky motor also on the other side. So then we have a motor. Uh, then that's like maybe a device which just converts electric energy into mechanical energy, right? So we all know. At the requirements, it can also become a, a generator. So it, it pumps out the energy when you're braking, decelerating, and things like that to the battery. And then you have an inverter, which is your traction inverter. Basically, most of the motors we use in mobility applications are AC motors. <clears throat> so they work on an AC current, but the source, which is there in the battery pack, is your DC, right? So the cells are, the cells are giving out a DC. So the pack is giving out a DC. So you need to convert the DC to AC. So that's, that's why you need an inverter, uh, which converts uh, DC to a, a motor requirements of AC. And also it does control of... Uh, the motor RPM, motor torque, motor temperature, regions of its operation, a lot of things. Uh, that's a, a bigger debate all into a place. So then the other side, we have an onboard charger, which basically a device which is required to charge your battery. Uh, and we have a grid where you have alternating current, that's AC current available at your home applications, right? So all your sockets and, and all the things where we have AC current. So we need to convert that AC to DC so that we can charge the battery. So that's why you have onboard chargers. They also, we have offboard chargers. It means like the, the chargers which are very big in size, they will be sitting outside. So we call them as offboard chargers. So at, at the end of the day, electric vehicle need that charger to charge the batteries. Then you have DC-DC converter. It's a device basically helps us to because uh, step down the voltages of the battery. Because typically if you see battery pack voltages like uh, in Mahindra, it's, it's like a 48 to 72 volt architecture. And then if you take Nissan, it's, it's closer to 380, 375 volt architecture. Then if you take uh, buses, it's close around 800 plus volt architecture, nearly 800 volt. So, but all your horns, headlights, lamps, tailgate, tailgates, your infotainment system, your, all other systems, right? your air conditioning system, all these things has to work with uh, lower volts. So that's why we need a DC-DC converter, which basically takes, takes out the energy from the battery and converts it. Steps, steps down the voltage from higher voltage to lower voltage and system requirements. Then you have a battery management system, which is here. I'll go through each of them in little detail. Um, so battery management system is, is a state of art electronics, which is engaged in um, ensuring the cell safety. Uh, because lithium ion cells typically, which is used in automotive applications because of the energy density and the volumetric energy, which, is have, which they have. So it is the only source of uh, energy which, which you can store uh, medium of storage of energy uh, because none of the other cell chemistries can support right now for automotive applications. So you would need a, a cell of that sort. So when, when you have something like that, you, we need to ensure the cell safety because the cell containing a lot of energy inside them. So when you have a lot of energy, uh, they are susceptible to failure and something goes wrong. You, you could see a big blast of uh, you know, the bomb inside the vehicle itself. So we need to ensure that the cell is safer at a given condition. To ensure that the cell safety, 
we need electronics that is what bms is basically now apart from it you have a heater because the battery uh, our cell is, is very susceptible to temperature uh, if you affect the cell within you know above its regions of operations of cell temperature the cell will give out a very bad efficiencies and a lot of losses inside a cell and it affects the life of a cell and having that as a very expensive component in the vehicle right because the battery constitutes close around 30 40% of the vehicle cost so imagine something goes on the wrong of your battery basically you have to replace a whole battery pack the same like an engine right if the engine ceases you just need to replace it uh, so the same way battery pack is very expensive something goes wrong you can't afford to uh, lose that whole the cost of the vehicle and you need to replace as a the new new cost for that so and also country like india we have temperatures varying from let's say 0 to like minus also to 40 50 degrees celsius so it is a wide range of operation if you go to china or or, or europe the temperatures are not really that much varying so they always sort of keep it limited within itself of the range of operation right so we need a lot of cooling system and also heating system for the battery pack that is where we see a lot of opportunities for engineers to enter in um so that's that's pretty about it let me take few questions here if you have any few questions just just let us know until then i take few questions in the chat box so if you have any questions still here you can just drop in or else uh, we can take up the sessions ahead if there is no questions right so looks like there no questions here so we'll we'll take it ahead uh let's understand traction motors as such and this this won't be the session you know where we can really discuss that you know uh how how traction motor technology is and you know what kind of uh, tech we use in traction motors is it induction motor is the bldc motor is it what other type of motors we will not talk about it um so we will talk more about from the perspective of uh, uh engineering that is from the automotive engineering that you know what we will be involved in uh, designing these components right so that is that is a major scope of it if you see just as a replacement to to ic engines uh basically the, the the part of power train the motor would be the component right so the motor basically drives that you know mobility application so when we want to do that so we are, we can directly see you have to have all these components uh look at from the perspective of a mechanical engineer or let's say automotive engineer so you see that you have to have sort of you know all these components it means like you know uh if you take you know, the casing which is required for the the motor housing or is the 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 rot the rotor shaft itself or is at the rotor side there are a lot of uh, components that we need to keep maybe if it's a magnet so you need a slots to keep a magnet and the whole core itself right and and then the enclosures for all these uh, uh, motors so that is where which we see a typically as an application point of it where maybe there were engineers who were working in the design sector of uh, i see engines now you see uh, designing these components for automotive applications because we have been doing casting design in our uh, power train requirements and also the the forging if it is the pistons and things like it are connecting rod but the similar way we see there is a huge requirement for the casting design here the casting design is all the enclosures which is there which is basically aluminum casting and then all the side enclosures too and obviously it's not just the casting and machining and other parts of it too and then you see you see a lot of uh, the the sheet metal components which comes as a the fine planking or maybe even part of the punching process itself so that is where we see a lot of engineers getting into the very core sector of designing uh, our motor components than shifting from the components of ic engine power trains like your engine blocks or any of the other components this is in terms of design and once the phase of design is done you you have to do a manufacturing fea and then the manufacturing simulation and then obviously the production and whatever the process goes on into the mold design and the tool design and then the the design kick off itself right so which we see the engineers who are there in designing of these components will shift themselves towards uh, you know designing of uh, the motor components and things like that and then going ahead i want to brief out another uh, bigger journey here this is audi e-tron's powertrain 
when we mean as a powertrain, it contains all the components, right? So, which I highlighted in the previous slides that you know uh, the IC engines have uh, bigger transmissions, right? You have multiple gear ratios, gear ratios, and things like that. But if you see here that you know you have a smaller drive, like smaller gear ratio drivetrain, which is here, which sits on the left topmost of the screen, and where, where we see not many gear ratios, but yeah, you could see like a two to three, or possibly you will have epicyclic gear ratios like Audi, or even in Porsche and few of the other vehicle segments. Uh, we have seen more of the epicyclic gear, gear train uh, configuration. But if you see, and if you ask me, uh, yeah, somebody has to do, do a design development. So the engineers who are there in that segment of uh, uh, transmission design, I would, I'd, I'd, I would not say like, you know, they will lose the jobs. And as sort of a situation, definitely everybody will have their own, you know, sort of a, a job roles to play around. And uh, Apart from the transmission, which you see right over there, there are a lot of other components at the powertrain itself as a, trans as a motor, which we have discussed a few components of it, and then enclosures and stuff like that. So what you see, I, I don't want you to kind of feel like, you know, I, I, what I'll do as an engineer, if I get out of the career, so you, you still see a scope for a design, that's the first, first phase, and then you also see a scope for a, a FEA simulations, and then if you, if you can see still a scope for a manufacturing simulation, uh, like if you, if you have a plastic design, you have a mold flow. If you have a casting design, you have a, again a different type of mold flow. If it is a forging design, you have a you know, forging simulation tools and things like that. And then over that, once the simulation and the design process is done, so you have a manufacturing step where you'll be designing the mold design or possibly like a forging mold design and things like that, right? Forging tool design, or uh, die and stamp design and things like that. So which I don't see the jobs will erode. I'm just comparing apple to apple, like a powertrain of a uh, IC engine vehicle and a powertrain of an electric powertrain, right? If you compare both of them, you, you see a similarity of, of design elements. You see a similarity of similar components. So nothing to worry as such, as such as a design engineering or a simulation engineering or testing engineering, validation engineering. Those jobs I feel will still retain because it, they require, industry require similar of them. But the approach of design would be a little different. But the skill volumes and the you know, sizes will be similar. And, and as sort of here, I have, I've mentioned a few more points that in the thermal NVH and testing, uh, it's very critical that the motor is susceptible for the, the, the temperatures because you have a permanent magnets inside a motor. If, if temperature goes a little level, a specific temperature that, you know, the, the uh, magnet will lose their uh, magnetic uh, capabilities and it could be a permanent effect on the magnet or else also a sort of a temporary effect where your motor efficiency is bad. Imagine if the motor is operating at 90% efficiency or 95% efficiency. Just because of the temperature, the motor can go down to 80% efficiency. So what it can contribute is you're trying to draw 10% more amount of energy from all your subsystems, right? So if you go back here on my previous presentations, uh, you have uh, a motor, so then you need to have, uh, it, it, draw, it is trying to draw more uh, power because its efficiency of operations is bad right now because of temperatures. So it is trying to overdraw current from the inverter. The inverter trying to overdraw current from the battery pack. So the battery pack have to pull out more amount of uh, uh, energy to give out to the motor. It means that you're consuming more amount of energy uh, to run the, the vehicle itself. So it, it, it doesn't just contribute at a motor level itself, even it will contribute at the inverter level and also at the battery level. So you're not accounting 10% of losses, basically, possibly at the cumulative effect, possibly you're accounting at 30% of losses or 20% of losses. And these losses are affecting to the life of a battery and life of all these components. So thermal becomes very, very, very crucial in, in whole of automotive and specifically in powertrain segment, right? Because if you consider previous, if in case the engine is operating at a bad efficiency, right? But your pump and uh, fuel fueling systems and all, will be still working at a, their own efficiency, right? Their independent system. But if you see here, affecting a motor could affect everything else at the bottom line, right? So which is typically the thermal uh, as, a, as a very major scope, what people are seeing today. Uh, engineers with a very better skills in simulation and you know, understanding the fundamentals of uh, thermodynamics and also advanced heat transfers. And, and, and a lot of people who have good degrees in MTech, uh, they see a huge application of cooling of motors. Because similarly, we had a cooling of IC engines. We have a very big challenge to cool the motors because of its small sizes. Because for our automotive, we want very smaller motors. And the area has to be very small. That kind of challenge is to make right design as an approach. Okay? So you have to be very 
speculative on on what you can get as a job opportunities in in thermal. So, but I see there is a huge huge scope for a uh, uh, opportunities in thermal design of the the motors as such, because as as I said, it contributes very high amount of uh, efficiency losses if thermals are bad. So, so which you can look for uh, opportunities like that. But apart from it, as I said, mechanical you have all the components. Uh, how we do like you know uh, segment wise uh, career guiding in in uh, automotive is uh, like you have a specific component we approach it with the manufacturing process let's say i was an engineer at mercedes so when i was designing the plastics right so i, I was only working on plastics again in plastics we have automotive interiors automotive exteriors automotive powertrain then functional plastics and things like that so an engineer will be specialized in only designing that component. If I was an exterior plastic engineer, I won't know much about interior plastics. The same way in, in, in specific segment of automotive, if you see here, somebody is designing uh, housing components, right? Which is basically uh, aluminum casting, majorly. So he will be specialized in aluminum casting and for the lifetime, I believe most of the people who work in automotive, they'll be working on a one domain maybe at, at least 15 years, then they become a managers and they manage the teams into a place of 15, 20 years. So any of these segments, like, you know, a casting component design, and then the gear design, and, and any of the machining component design, and a, a sheet metal stamping dies, stampings. So these are the very various areas, which is very specific to automotive, uh, or powertrain of EVs, which will be highlighted in the future. And NVH, obviously, because uh, uh, motor is, uh, motor for application, like a general application, for your house application or else industrial automations, any of the thousand reasons for the, like, you know, you're using lathes and things like that. But a uh, motor used in automotive application is very critical and crucial because it is undergoing a huge environmental changes uh, with respect to where it has been used and also the huge uh, vibrations because of our road conditions. So it, it requires a proper analysis of NVH. Again, you see a lot of opportunities over there uh, in, the, in the NVH segment uh, for, for careers. <clears throat> then obviously the testing, which is, which is like a major, major time taking process. I believe this has given you some sort of insights on what sort of, uh, you know, discussions we are trying to drive down to further, further slides. So if you have any questions, just drop us at the text box uh, so that I can answer you back. If uh, no questions for 30 seconds, we'll continue the session in Traction Inverters. Right, um, if, if no questions seen here, uh, maybe I'll just wait for another few seconds. The one more thing which uh, possibly highlighted here is, you know, if you want to find some opportunities in the areas of traction motors, find out, you know, where these companies, list down, you know, who are the people who are working in the areas of motors. You know, when, when I graduated as a student, uh, 2012, I had a similar, you know, sort of a challenging situation because I graduated, I did not know what companies I can apply for. And I didn't have a list of X and Y Z companies. And I didn't know what kind of a job role I can really apply in these companies. So it, it's very important as an engineer, you should, before you graduate, be very serious about, you know, because competition is really, really big today. Possibly six years back, it was there, eight, eight years back, and now it is more even, right? So you have to find out, you know, who are the people in India are working on uh, traction motors. Maybe it is a OEM, like Compage is there and few other companies are there and like, like there are suppliers who are providing services to design these motors, right? Like they are the design houses. Then there are companies like even TCS, Infosys, HP, HCL, all these companies, they do offer engineering services, okay? It means they just, they just don't do IT. They also cater some services in design too. Uh, they also have a mechanical engineering jobs, core mechanical engineering jobs. So you need to identify, okay, what is my sector in automotive? If it is a powertrain, what is inside powertrain? Okay, that is another very specific direction we need to have. So Nandan has a question here. How can an automotive engineer uh, have a career in R&D in the sector? Uh, Nandan, R&D itself is a very, very big word, okay? Because it is not something uh, I would say not you should dream of, but you know what happens when I had the same dream that I want to work on hybrid vehicles at the very beginning of it. And I visited uh, Toyota and a few other, few other companies because my uncle had some references to go and visit. So, you know, I, all I saw over there is people with at least like 10 years, 15 years, eight years, 12 years of experience. So R&D is something which is not 
like you know you could just get into a knock the door and you know you can get you there are ip issues there are like you know patenting things and then people doesn't just just hello entertain everybody and there is a specific division of it there's approach to get inside so first i think you should be very open minded to start your career to take a first step enter into a segment of evs and then uh, uh, any subsystem then over the time when you when you uh, get an experience exposure you could you could you know sort of uh, dream yourself i would say r and d but start at a point where you feel to be in automotive first or let's say if it's at least in powertrain you can you can try to start your career in powertrain uh all right vinit uh, adding to nandan's question looking at the current curriculum we are barely knowing even the basic cpp nothing wrong with it i mean it it takes a time to update the curriculum and there are there are people available to teach you things online right not everything can be part of the curriculum i do agree i i wish things will come faster as such today there are very few universities itself like could offer the curriculum in evs and as such in you know, on the other side we don't get a faculty who is experienced in uh, teaching this subjects because at industry itself we are struggling to get a uh, right skilled candidates to work in the sector of evs okay that is that is another uh, real realistic situation so even the college curriculum is set up college need to have a very well trained faculties in, in specific areas and expertise in that areas right so it takes a time the process will take a time and we have seen this push in last two years three years i mean i think yeah a few months down the line we are also consulting few universities maybe there people are willing to see forward that that's what direction i would say but there are a lot of opportunities available to learn off the beat from your curriculum you can always do that um maybe we could go down and you know we can answer your full questions in the later stages thanks for interacting and i very appreciate you putting the questions here um we will definitely come back and answer these questions so guys if, if any anybody have questions if i do not answer it now i'll take the questions at the last of the discussions so it's more easier to uh, address them and we'll try to take small breaks in between so that it it kind of relaxes me also in delivering the session and also it kind of gives you a, a proper way of, of listening to it so let's move ahead next thing uh the traction inverter <coughs> uh which is as a sort of it uh is a device which uh, converts the ac to dc sorry dc to ac to supply to a motor on the other side requirements when motor becomes a generator which takes out the regenerative energy and puts back that energy into the battery right and through a specific system of bms and all these things so as such majorly this is a job role of a power electronics engineer or a embedded engineers so that's majorly from an emc and a electrical department but as i see from an automotive perspective and i see from an engineering design perspective see again this system because we are converting energy from ac to dc or dc to ac which is basically switching right which produces enormous amount of heat heat in the whole component that's why you have a proper aluminum enclosures which sits see here and uh, which i can just shift to the next slide which is here so these systems again has to be designed uh, you need to compare it like this right so it is not like okay everything is an engine here everything is not a motor here so like you have a fuel pump the intake systems exhaust systems and ic engines the same way here we have a motor that is a engine sort of a apple apple comparison then you have a subsystems right your intake exhaust similar way fuel pump here we have like a traction inverter that's a sort of a device where you know you have uh, conversions happening from ac to dc and dc to ac it means it is producing a lot of heat so that means the that again the thermal becomes very very crucial because the power electronics or any of the microcontroller components will go boom if there is no proper cooling systems ensured at the the traction inverter stages so that again requires an enormous amount of cooling requirements and and the engineering perspective of thermals and then again anything which is having a shape anything which is an object has to be designed by a design engineer so if you take this components majorly all are aluminum uh, casted components um, typically are majorly so you need to have sort of a design skills in aluminum uh, casting design uh, if you see a enclosure here and then again um, there are a lot of components where you need for mountings and all these things so apart from it there is a very specific and peculiar industry which you may not have not aware about it okay it is called connectors and couplers uh, which i mentioned it here if you don't know what is the market size of that because you don't know how many number of inverters are required but actually for each inverter you, you require five or 10 of them this connector which are looking at a red color right and inside also you have multiples of them if you see here all these components which are here maybe if i can just draw some lines around here right here these components this component 
write these components you may feel like you know what is this a very small thing see but if you if you after this webinar you can just go and visit uh, te uh, te connectivity and molex and some of these companies there are thousands of engineers and manufacturers working to design these connectors that's a very big segment okay very big segment which is again in automotive connectors and couplers so again somebody need to design them as a mechanical engineers automotive engineers production design engineers and stuff like that then like once there's a design phase okay it is a majorly there are plastic components right so if you see here these are all the plastic components so it requires a plastic design engineering maybe uh, a design of plastics so the first perspective then the uh, fef plastics then the mold flow simulation of plastics then all the approvals are done you would have a tool design that's a plastic tool design so which is sort of a replacement to uh, a few of the components in ic engines and here we have a traction inverter so you still have opportunities for uh, to explore uh, in in terms of enclosure design thermals and connectors and couplers uh, so that is a bit of insights from my side then there are ev chargers the charger is as we discussed a device which converts an uh, 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 source of electricity that is from your uh, uh, best on grids and things like that to your vehicle so that's basically conversion of an uh, ac current or dc current for the charging applications so these chargers believe me like you know everybody have phones right so how many of you have multiple chargers maybe typically everybody would have more chargers because chargers are supposed to like you know go bad quite often so which i see there are more number of chargers than more number of mobiles right so when you have an application of that sort the similar thing for automotive also and and electric vehicles also because electric vehicle charges charging uh, uh, time is a challenging thing and also the range is a problem so you could see more charging stations let's say at every 10 10 kilometers and maybe at every 20 kilometers in the highways and things like that or maybe at houses like you know at every restaurants or your building apartments or at offices uh, where the big uh, tech parks are there you see more of them right which are also seeing like you know recently we were we running through one of the company they are setting up a charging stations at every kirana store i mean this is a way you see a huge demand for a charging infrastructure than even the vehicle itself because charges are required more uh, at a given moment of time than a vehicle itself because you would have one charger you don't know where all you can use that right so that's where which which i see importance for the chargers and then again all these chargers requires a design and because you see all the connectors couplers which sits here uh, in this uh, places right and the whole enclosures for the chargers that is where i see one of the major area and the charger enclosure itself and then definitely the thermals thermals are coming everywhere because they will come everywhere because it's a very 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 cr crucial system in automotive today in, in electric vehicle part lines so this is where i also see that you know you could you could perceive some of the opportunities maybe imagine you wanted to be in something like an automotive power train and you wanted to be in something else in power train which you know which we don't know usually at when you get out of the college so it's like uh, you're in the areas of um, uh component design of uh, let's say the pumps or or let's say component design of uh, maybe turbochargers right so the turbochargers are all design involved based on a casting components or a machining components and things like that so you could enter into some some area like this like a chargers or even the, the traction motor enclosures and things like that and typically apart from the uh, you know uh, on board chargers there are off board chargers the meaning of off board charging is pretty simple that you know these are the fast chargers typically Uh, these charges are very big in nature right and they deliver like a uh, 50 kilowatt 100 kilowatt of uh, power so it means they are very big you can't keep keep them inside the car so they will be outside the car like half board chargers so these chargers again typically require see, anywhere you see an object it has to be designed that, that's straight forward as it is so any of these companies who are working on the chargers so definitely you need engineers uh, in house in, in design and development of these chargers as such similarly which i see these are the areas of uh, opportunities for yourself then coming to the point of uh, um the traction cell uh, or a battery applications so it is a very 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 big area to discuss upon and and maybe because when i deliver sessions it, it, this is this itself is like a two or three day course uh, to learn about uh, batteries and things like that just the battery as such so first we start from a cell uh, as such in india we don't have uh, cell level development even though there are few colleges uh, like uh, research colleges and things like that they're working on cell but i don't see something coming up very easily 
for automotive application because application for automotive is very crucial and very challenging as such. Uh, using uh, battery for your uh, toys and, and some other applications is totally different. Okay, something can happen, but nothing can go bad much or worse. But in automotive, if something wrong happens, the whole car at a stake and the human life is at a stake. So first at the chemistry level, uh, electrochemistry itself, there's a huge demand for engineers in electrochemistry. And then uh, because we don't involve much in India as an electrochemistry, because we don't have materials and production houses in India, like, like how we have in China or uh, maybe Taiwan or even uh, Indonesia, some parts of some parts in Indonesia and, 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 and some countries like US, they have production facilities like Tesla. So the Gigafactory which they have set up is like 35 uh, gigawatt uh, of, of battery production. Actually, that is equivalent to the whole world's production. That's the big size of the battery they're heading it up. So planned. Uh, so they're working on their own level of exposure experience in, in, in batteries. But which we see in India majorly is we buy these cells from vendors and we try to see how I can use that cell, how I can package that cell for an automotive application. Okay. That's where it comes into a major picture that, you know, how, how we can, as an application engineer's perspective, right? And we will be involved in designing of a cell simulation, the pack simulation, cell testing, uh, cell thermals, and battery pack design, and battery pack level thermals. Cell, cell level thermals are different, and pack level thermals are different, right? So that is where, which I see, there is a huge demand for engineers. And when you talk about a cell simulation, uh, it, it is possibly using a tools like MATLAB, or possibly tools like ANSYS, or, or tools like ANSYS uh, uh, thermals or maybe even cost more and things like that. So there is a huge demand in this area because cell is something an unknown factor, okay? Uh, because it's a highly nonlinear system at a chemistry level. Because you know, it is very tough to predict a chemical reaction with respect to a specific way it operates. Now, first of all, that itself is a difficult thing. Like you have a contained chamber, which is at 25 degrees Celsius and an X pressure and a Y, all these things. It is okay to observe the chemical reactions, but here in automotive, we are setting up the cell to undergo a lot of transit requirements. Like you know, when you're accelerating, there's a lot of current drawn, then you're decelerating, the, the, the battery is getting charged, and then you're continuously using for a longer time. The battery has been used in higher temperatures like Chennai, or it is also used in very lower temperatures in the up north. Uh, or down in south, we have very temperatures. So, when a system is subjected to a highly non-linearity, it is very, very challenging to understand. So that is where a lot of engineers are involved in simulation and it's a sort of a black box right now to understand a cell. Every manufacturer, every startup in Bangalore or even in anywhere across India are struggling to find the right battery pack. And you know, you, you, you heard about Okinawa phrase, right? So what happened when vehicle was released? Then a lot of issues with the battery pack. And moment that comes up, customers will lose hope about electric vehicles. Now, Aether is doing much better, at least in that segment. And a lot of other vehicles also, like, you know, the batteries got burned up. And even Bajaj Chetak, there was one of its uh, case, right? So, it, it, it is like, why it is like that? It, it means it's a very complex thing to understand, a, a, a highly nonlinear in the way to understand. So, that is why we need engineers to work on these areas to improvise and understand the system, system level knowledge. So this is some job roles which I put across. Then on the other side, the pack. Excuse me. So on the pack side, if you, if you talk about it, uh, taking a cell is one area. Building a pack is a very complex uh, approach itself. The reason being is, you know, first let's talk about um, the way the thermals are behaved and the mechanical integrity. This is the two very, very important topics uh, to, to have a discussion. So one is mechanical integrity. We need, because you, you, you're subjecting the vehicle to a lot of torsional loads. And then when you're steering the system, when you're going on the banking roads, when you're going to park your vehicle at uneven roads, you're, you're subjecting the vehicle to undergo a lot of uh, torsional loads, right? And obviously when you're accelerating your vehicle, decelerating your vehicle, or imagine for an unfortunate situation, there is an accident on the vehicle. So it is undergoing a huge amount of uh, dynamic load conditions. So now you need to design a system. And these are the cells, right? Imagine yourself like an arranging 100 cells at a one given place and try to give a one foot of a load. It, it kind of uh, makes the whole system to go bad, right? So the same way here, first is mechanical integrity of a system. And the second thing is uh, uh, 
a thermal integrity of a system. So it requires a very complex thermal uh, design uh, to ensure the heat, uh, proper heat dissipation in the battery pack. So that is where sort of engineers are required uh, to understand these systems. And that too in India, we have a very critical need uh, to, to have engineers on the, the battery thermals and the battery pack design as such. So <clears throat> coming to the BMS, uh, not much on the mechanical or automotive engineering side. So I would say more of a electronics. Uh, but also on the other side, if somebody want to work on these systems, they have to have a data from a testing, they have to have a testing data. Okay, that is a responsibility of us, uh, automotive background, or let's say from uh, other background to do a testing of the cells and give them a data. So, and then I see one more opportunity for engineers is in the electrical routing. Uh, it's, it's also a roles of an electrical engineer, but also majorly mechanical engineers are also, uh, automotive engineers are also hired to work in the areas of uh, uh, electrical routing and things like that, which you see majorly here, the design of routing systems. So coming to the last few slides of my presentation, so I wanted to ensure that, you know, uh, this is not just about powertrain, okay? So the, well, the meaning is the car or a bike or a scooter or a truck is not just because there is, a, there is an IC engine, right? There's a transmission, there is a power electronics of engine management system. It is not, it is not that. The powertrain is just a one of the part. That is something we have to realize because even I had a similar kind of a thought in my engineering that, you know, engine is everything. You know, that it's your engine division, you're like one of the, the very core of automotive or something like that. It, it is all false because BIW design, there is a seating design, plastic design, steering, braking, vehicle dynamics, safety systems, ADAS, HVAC. I can just go on. Like this, there are many, many divisions, okay? And an automotive, if I'm say uh, Tata Motors, they would have more than like 100 plus engineers working in the BIW division. And then they have like tire one, tire two suppliers. They are also having 100 plus engineers working in the BIW division for each vehicle segment, right? So it means you need to think not only as a powertrain, not only you, you have to feel like, you know, and car is a car still, that just the powertrain has been shifted, right? From the IC engines to our EVs. So you still see a huge, huge opportunity in all the other component design. So which is another good opportunity for all of us, which is not a part of this discussion, maybe because each of these topics are very you know, extensive in its own way. Uh, so, so don't just feel like, you know, a powertrain is everything. You also have to look for some opportunities like this. Okay. And then once the system is designed, then we have like, you know, uh, let's say the testing, homologation, quality, well development, supply chain, services, uh, a lot of these things where you're gonna also find some opportunities for uh, your own engineering skills as such. So then uh, living at all these things, uh, what should I learn uh, and, uh, uh, to get prepared? So first and foremost, you, you have to have a system level knowledge at EV and uh, then subsystem level knowledge at a very deeper level at each of the subsystems. And then that, that two things is like, you know, your foundation, right? You, we study your, your fundamentals engineering in our college days, right? Like mathematics, like that's a fundamental, you can build things over it. So like, you know, it, it may be an like automotive engineer, mechanical engineer, electronics, EC, whatever it is, it is sort of an induction training. Everybody should know if you want to get into an automotive. That's the first and foremost thing. And then once you, once you undergo this basic knowledge level courses, you can actually further understand, okay, where my interest is, where my capabilities are, where my domain exposure would be better, or where my skills are suitable. Let's say I'm good in mathematics, I'm good in physics, I'm good in simulations. I'm good in more of a operation side of engineering. Uh, you can define yourself, your stream, once you understand these areas, okay? Because I met a lot of engineers who are working in supply chain of uh, uh, automotive electric vehicles. Because, see, who has to supply, this? somebody has to supply this battery pack, somebody has to supply these batteries. That itself is a very vast area when you're procuring a volumes of let's say 10 million, 20 million dollars. So you need to have a proper supply chain because you're saving like a one dollar for each unit. You're saving like you know, fifty thousand dollars over a uh, twenty million order, right? So that's a big thing. There are people working on it and, and they're getting well-paid salaries and things like this. You need to explore because it's not everybody is interested in design, not everybody is interested in simulation, not everybody is interested in testing, validation, and on a core of uh, technical jobs. So get, get, choose a specialization you like to, or what industry needs. So that is where it comes to two ways. Okay, can I learn myself? 
or can I, can I take up some courses which are professional and delivered by professionals? Or maybe can I take up masters in other countries where the courses have been offered as a specialization in these subsystems, like electric drives, if you take an example. There are specializations in some universities like University of uh, UC Boulders or in, in some parts of uh, UK and, and maybe in India too, there are specializations available as such. So which gives you a practical exposure to a subsystem level knowledge where you can become specialized, right? The skill is a major key. So without having the skill, we, we blabber anything, nobody cares shit, right? <clears throat> so it, it's very crucial to kind of have that kind of a skill uh, if you want to enter into an automotive industry or let's say specifically an EV segment. And uh, definitely you need to have right guidance. Maybe like at least this webinar is trying to kind of throw up a light where you can see yourself a few opportunities ahead. Like this, you could have a personal mentor who have worked in industry, maybe you call a senior, and maybe somebody who have, who have real exposure to automotive and things like that. that can, they can give you some better direction. And then carry out projects. This is a very important thing. I know I did myself some project in my college. So I'm not very proud of doing it. Okay, but I didn't feel like you know, it has given me really something as a valuable thing out of it. So it's a very crucial thing which I see my students at uh, universities in uh, other countries are, are following it up. A lot of uh, advanced projects and things like that. So it feels very privileged to see, you know, what kind of uh, things they've been. So it becomes very crucial to carry out a right project, very systematic approach, and maybe not just doing something, but but technically thinking about it and approaching it as a problem statement, being very serious about it. Because I know what projects we have all done, right? So majorly, there are a few serious people definitely, and I appreciate them. But but you have to be more serious because that's the only one thing in a college life. Like you know, we we we, we do something hands on. Uh, at, at applying the skills of all the engineering knowledge, right? So, which is very important. And I also urge uh, to have some you know, industry collaborations uh, that you can, colleges can offer some projects uh, for students. And that becomes more of a solution oriented projects. Uh, that become, it, it, it will put up a pressure on you that you know you have to provide a solution. When you take a project from industry, they will be damn on, I'll fund as much as possible, but give me a solution, right? So that's a way you can learn. And, and obviously you need to be aware of tools used in industry. There are very advanced tools because you know, the, the kind of tech growth which is happening, it is very difficult. I understand colleges to follow it up, but at least being in relationship with the companies, they can, they can guide the tools. Maybe you can conduct a smaller webinars, or maybe smaller technical sessions, a two day, three day on a weekends and things like that, where, where you can invite people from industry, uh, get the knowledge of tools to use, let's say Cosmo or something, or a MATLAB, the simulation of electric vehicle in a, MATLAB, a simulation of the battery in a MATLAB, a simulation of the pack in a MATLAB, a developing of a BMS itself in a MATLAB, a developing a whole powertrain in a MATLAB. Or in similar tools like the MATLAB may be expensive on the other side, you can use a tools like Scilab, right? There are similar tools to a MATLAB. So all these things can be done at a college level itself if you can take a serious project and uh, things like that. So then the other side, uh, if, you, if you go across, uh, you see uh, that, you know, uh, get internships, uh, that's a very important thing that, you know, it gives you opportunity. I wish colleges, ASAT has made it more mandatory to give six months because a lot of people ask us, can I get an internship in your company? Definitely we are open for it. But the only thing is it is very difficult to have you for one month and actually you can't get anything. I can't get anything in my company. So I don't usually entertain for shorter internships so or like a longer internship, like a six months, like where you can actually learn and you know, where you can expect something out of you. I believe that will happen when things become universities on an individual level so they can decide things upon. So you should do internships seriously. If you after your graduation, don't expect a big job. And currently the situation is very worst across in the industry. So it's not a direct hiring. Maybe be ready to work for six months for free if, if somebody asks you, or if you get at least a right position, and then if you get a right exposure, be ready. Because, because there is enough junk of engineers have, have been you know, pumped out of a job roles because a lot of projects cut down has happened. They're available at a cheaper price and they're experienced possibly. And this is, this is a very big challenge for students to have. So be ready if something comes up or definitely if you can get a job, that's, that's really fantastic. But for people who haven't, take up an internships, uh, take up where I don't know that the people can really uh, give you a uh, setup because it's not only the internship as a job role somebody can give you. So if you need to set up an office infrastructure, it will cost you like five to 10,000 rupees for a one sitting, sitting place, right? And then we have to cover up your computers. Uh, a single license of MATLAB is like 12 to 18 lakhs. So do you think somebody can really put up a system and it'll give you the infrastructure to learn it across? On the other side, people in the industry are also struggling. So the same way you need to understand it. And you know, if you want to grow up your career, make quicker decisions and make a direction of a path that, that will give you a better, uh, quicker opportunities. Rather than like, you know, wasting one year after graduation, figuring out what to do, start 
maybe a free internship and, and something where you can really learn things in your place. And get mentorship, that's a better way where you know, people can actually uh, guide you, uh, do this, do that. Uh, it's good if, if your dad is there, if your uncle is there, if your brother is there. But unfortunately, where I come from, I come from a very basic family where my father does agriculture. So you, you don't know what damn I'm doing. Right? So you need to have better people. Get connected in social media. I know we, we all use Facebook. We all use Instagram for different purposes. Start using LinkedIn. Uh, list like 30 companies, 40 companies in the electric vehicle segment. List domain-specific skills. Look at the people who are working in the industry. See their job roles. See the introduction of their profiles, what they've written, what kind of projects they've done. That gives you, okay, this is a direction I want to work my, myself in the future, right? So that than after graduating, if you want to figure out what to do, you're already waste, like, you know, wasting your sweet time of getting a job rather than searching a job at the time. So then there are definitely the numerical simulation tools and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure what really happened. Okay, so yeah, that's a bit about what what you can you know take it ahead. Uh, that's pretty much from my side. Um, so over to uh, you. If you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and drop in the questions. Uh, I should be able to answer the, the part of the QA session. And uh, in the meantime, if you have uh, no questions, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, the, the questions got, I don't know what happened. The screen just went off and came back. Uh, looks like all the chat box is deleted. I've dropped in a, one of the survey form, which gives you uh, a portion to fill out you know, what sort of EE industry you see ahead uh, in the future and how do you see the job roles and things like that. You can fill the Google form. In the meantime, I'm here to take up a few questions. Um, sorry, I a bit over a few minutes of the session. Uh, so thanks for you know having all the patience to listen to it. Um, yeah, oh the, the the floor is open for our QA session. So over to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop in. Or if you want to just talk, unmuting yourself. Uh, if it's a quite like a quite an environment background of yourself, you can just unmute and then ask questions. I believe there will be a lot of questions, right? Because, because it is quite important to have a uh, few questions at the place um, because that gives you sort of a, a better exposure. And definitely if you ask an email, I don't know whether I'll be able to reply after tomorrow itself. If you ask questions, we can maybe quickly discuss. And that also gives an opportunity for other learners to um, kind of get a perspective of, of uh, similar questions they might have in their minds. So I'll wait for another minute. Uh, if there's no questions, uh, uh, we will be able to wind up the session. I think Vineet, you dropped a question. I'm sorry, the questions all got erased. I don't see anything in my chat box. It's all fresh right now. Uh, if you want to just kindly redrop the uh, question, so it would be very easier for me to answer you back. All right. Um, so uh, looks no questions here. Uh, I really appreciate everybody for joining in for the session. Um, uh, thanks a lot uh, for giving me an opportunity. Uh, thanks a lot for the department. Hello. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, I had one question. Um, 
now looking at the current trends of what's happened and the whole industry on our standby what do you think uh, is uh what do you think apart from design because okay. that's not something everybody is interested into yeah. what do you think yeah. is one of or or a few of the best skills we could uh, develop during this period uh, for the industry which is uh, probably going to resume in about a year i think completely right right So I think, as a very wide perspective, I know the question is definitely sort of a uh, what other skills like you know which are described here maybe in this segment of it uh, could could briefly answer that question, which is not only in let's say the design, uh, simulation, uh, like testing, then like simulation at that point, then there's a, something else on testing, so where you could you could work on like you know testing the components and things like that. and then you know um so then the homologations is a part of it where you have to get an approvals for these vehicles okay and then there is a quality division so then there is a vendor development where you have to build a network of people uh, who supplies like you know people i would say like the companies uh, it's a huge like every company has like 10 to 15 vendor development team and uh, so there you can you can get into it and supply chain and and supply manage uh, supply chain management and as such even at a uh, in the like production level also there are a lot of jobs for the manufacturing of battery pack or let's say even even the, the traction motors or traction inverters and things like that so it's it's a sort of a very you know wide uh, question but if i can answer you a very simplistic way i think i think what people are looking for today is to have a very good analytical skills and and also as a fresher what somebody is expecting is like you know if you can learn something which is which is out of your uh, uh, scope of learning uh, which is not somebody taught you if you could do that you could do anything else in, in doing today a graduate is a mechanical engineer i work in in i you know all the components of electronics i comp- I, i manage a team of 10 people to to develop some systems consult and things like that so it is not something and you know, actually you would be very focused to but which i feel is like being more analytical being more approaching to a problem being more understanding the system itself will give you a, a better scope of finding a right opportunities for you okay so maybe that is something but apart from it i don't know what skill sets i could just tell you okay this is x and y and z maybe i can talk to you personally to understand you know what what more sort of direction you are heading for right uh there are few questions here um okay uh sector toxins we provide much help for needed okay thanks a lot uh and having for inviting and uh gagan here um so will there be complete shift from ev or it's being hev for few years fantastic question gagan uh so very matured question too so to answer you um which i don't see a country like india would adopt hybrids because of the complexity and the cost like toyota hybrid came prius i i drove the car uh, and there are a lot of testing happened in india even in bangalore birdi plant but but really the product didn't click off because of the costing and and that it it might have worked in us uh, because like the way of regulations and all these things i think in india i don't see it it does make a much sense uh, as sort because because all the hy- hybrid projects has been killed uh, in in oems also majorly there are smaller projects if i if i can tell you not really big ones so i see majorly it would be a direct shift to a, a hybrids not for evs from ics uh, maybe there are small projects which you could see but not not rigorously a uh, lot la- large of large number of uh, vehicles and what like what we say shgv and all these things it's good let let me not claim how much efficient they are but but maybe it is it is on the subsidy reasons and things like that but but apart from it yeah i i i see like some developments but not major major contributor systems because they are complex and uh, when the system is complex redundancy of the system is also not that much because they tend to fail more components more more tendency to fail that's where i see so that people will shift to evs possibly than hgvs okay so akash um Yeah, I guess to answer you personally, the question which you have pinged me privately, yes, uh, it covers up the the the, the learning from eighteenth, uh, and yeah, maybe we can talk for, privately on that. I have you, you have my email address. You can just drop me a message. 
Akash, uh, I should be able to respond back to you. So, yeah, I think keeping uh, everything great after the one point. Uh, so what I wanted to kind of cover it up is, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it is a opportunity because I have another lot of slides I can show it across what is the ecosystem in India, you know, how many uh, sort of a jobs are there and, and things like that. So the, the, the problem here is, you know, uh, um, it, is, it is very challenging to uh, uh, bring out everything at a one slide. I can show you some ecosystems which are there in electric vehicles, like you know, how many startups are there, how many uh, you know projects are going on in India, and you know, what kind of things are going on. So it will be it will be maybe other presentation itself. I can show you the ecosystem in Bangalore itself on the EVs. So definitely uh, start building something on EVs, start making projects in EVs, uh, you know, start interacting with people. Uh, that's a way you could you could get better exposure uh, than what you are right now at at at, at having exposures, right? And that's pretty much from my side and uh, fantastic interacting with everybody and thanks very much for Department of Automobile Engineering and, and uh, Professor Naveen and the head of the department and connecting to us you know, and, and, and uh, to make this event happen uh, uh, at this day. So going ahead, definitely be in touch. It's not the day we could all stop. You, you always have our contacts, which is, I dropped you. You can always visit Decibels. Uh, just let us know if you're visiting on any day and we can, we can definitely uh, connect back and you know, take it back. Thanks a lot and um, a good day ahead. Stay safe, keep learning. Uh, thank you.